I got a lot to cover in this video. This video is going to cover my 2022 fall EDC, which is pretty much like the EDC I've been using most of the year. It's going to get me a long-term review of this Chrome Mini Cadet that I've been using for a little bit over a year. And then I'm going to go over what's actually in my current like city EDC, which is the Kavu uh, rope sling. I just did a review on this. There's a link in the description. Uh, there's going to be a ton of links in the description just because I'm going to be covering a lot of different things. And if I'm being honest, I don't remember the model names, the specific variations of all these little things I'm carrying around every day. So if I get something wrong, just go to the description. There's gonna be links to the exact products I'm talking about in this video. So, oh yeah, and I'm also wearing this uh, Help People Gear uh, chest rig. So we'll start here, just cause I wanna get all this off. It's kind of warm. Um, I'm gonna have little markers. So if you wanna skip any section cause it's not relevant, please follow those markers, check the contents in the description. So like I mentioned, I just got back from a dog walk and this time of year, the primary things I'm doing when I'm out of the house are I'm either out in the city, walking around, eating, restaurants, whatever, or I'm outdoors, bike riding, hiking, or I'm walking my dog. Um, I have a separate work EDC. Uh, I have a briefcase for that. I've kind of covered that a little bit in the past. I have a water field uh, briefcase, and there's a video I'll put it in the description as well. Uh, that's a little bit out of date, so I might do an updated work EDC. Um, I'm only in the office like one or two days a week. I'm primarily working from home, so... My primary EDC is this one, and then I have hiking and biking specific EDCs. So, starting with my dog walk EDC. Um, I'm actually gonna go over the, the stuff I use for my dog. This is, I use a prong collar just because she pulls a lot, and this has actually helped her stop pulling. She enjoys this, look, so she sees, <laughs> she sees the prong collar and she comes right away because she thinks we're about to go on a walk. Uh, a lot of people say these hurt dogs. Um, I haven't seen that with my dog, and obviously she, likes it. Um, she enjoys walks. It's one of her favorite things to do. And if it was such a painful experience, I don't think she'd be so excited about it. But the leash I have attached to this prong collar is made by a Seattle company. And it's, I think it's uh, specifically for training, but it has a handle here, has a little thing here that you can clip like dog bags to uh, maybe their IDs, whatever else. And then also towards the bottom of the leash, it has a separate padded handle that kind of fits in line normally but you can reach down and grab it, which is useful, say for like walking past another dog and I just need a little bit extra control. I can grab this and maneuver Billy around. So I do like this leash quite a bit and this has become like my, my go-to leash. I have another one that's really long. It's like a 10 foot leash that I can actually wear around me so I can go hands free. Uh, but I don't use that as much anymore just because she does so well and walks now that it's like, I can kind of like actually just let go of the leash if I need to use something. I'll start use both hands really quick. Um, when I'm going on walks around the town, I will use this. This is like my dog walking uh, bag. Uh, it's This is the Hill People Gear uh, chest rig. I have a larger one that I use for hiking whenever I'm using a chest rig while hiking or backpacking. Uh, but this is the one I use in the city. It's really small. This is like, I believe the smallest one they offer. And I chose this because it actually fits well under my raincoat or anything. It's pretty low profile. That's why I have this on right now, just to demonstrate that. And it only has two pockets. It has this pocket in front, which is really, really tight when you have a, a weapon in the back, main pocket. So really all you can fit in here is I, I carry my wallet. Um, I'll also carry uh, dog bags, some treats, and that's about it. Sometimes I'll stuff my headlamp because this time of year you kind of need a headlamp when you're walking outside. Just We walk the areas without street lighting sometimes and I need to figure out where the poop's at when she uses the restroom. So I have a headlamp I usually carry in here and I take it out because um, it doesn't really fit well in here when you're carrying it. So that's in here. Usually that's just where I store it and this is it. It's a Petzl. I don't really know how to pronounce this. Petzl Tika. It's a like kind of a $30 cheap headlamp which works well and it's comfortable to wear. So that sticks with my dog, dog walking stuff. I have a Glock 43 back here. I think technically you can fit a Glock uh, 19 in here. I wouldn't do it just because it's kind of tight already with this Glock 43, so I wouldn't really want to go larger than that. So this is why I wear when I'm kind of out with my dog. This is tight enough where you can't even really fit your phone in there. I mean, I guess you could if you forced it, but I don't do it. I carry my phone in my pocket, and this is just so I can carry a weapon or something, just because I'm in the Seattle area. There's some areas around here where there's a lot of homeless people and people on drugs and things like that. So that's my dog walking gear. Let me get this off really quick so we can move on. All right, that's better. Nice and cool. So 
Moving on, I'm gonna talk really quick about my long-term thoughts on the uh, Chrome Mini Cadet. Overall, I still really like this bag. I use it several times a week still because it's my primary like bicycle bag. And I'm gonna put this on so I can talk about it a little bit. The reason I started looking for a different bag is because I wanted something a little bit larger than this because I couldn't fit my larger cameras or larger things in there. Um, I used to carry sometimes those strap jackets to the bottom of this, but with this one I can actually stuff a puffer jacket inside, which is nice. Uh, inside it has two main, well it has a big giant pocket, has two little dividers in here, like a key ring, and it's a nice size, and like I mentioned you can expand this so the bag can get bigger or kind of snugged up against your body. It has an area in the back for a U-lock, and in the U-lock area, there's actually like a secret little pocket that I actually just forgot about until I was doing this video. And I don't use it just because it's so hidden that I forget about it. But it's probably useful for like cash or things like that. Um, one, also another reason I got rid of this bag is just because the inside is falling apart. The stitching is coming apart. The inside materials are getting pretty worn down and I've only used this for about a year. They did a good job with the materials on the outside of the bag. They're pretty durable. But the inside, it seemed like they skimped out or something just because the stitching's failing, the inside fabric is already getting worn through. So that was a downside, especially since this is like $20 more than my coffee bag. In the front, it's just another large pocket. There's no dividers or anything in here, or no smaller pockets. Uh, I like this one though more than any other sling bag I've used recently just because you can wear it so comfortably on the front. It fits just as comfortable on the front as it does on the back. And even when I'm in my car, since there's nothing on this really, it's pretty flat. Um, I can have this on the back, lean back, and it's like not painful to have against my back when I'm sitting in my car. So I don't have to take this off when I'm getting in my car like I do with this, because this isn't as comfortable to wear on the front as the Chrome Mini Cadet. But it's falling apart, and I want something a little bit bigger, so that's why I'm moving on. And I still use this for some situations, but that kind of covers my long-term thoughts with this. Not a bad bag, but... It could use a little bit of, uh, I guess, material improvements on the inside. So now moving on to my current EDC. I already went over the bag and I reviewed this bag, like I mentioned. But we'll go over what I'm actually carrying inside of it. Let me get this down a little bit. There we go. In this top pocket, uh, I mentioned before that this is not super secure, so I don't carry anything in here that I would be afraid to lose. Um, I keep a little microfiber cloth for cleaning my glasses and... Uh, electronics, things like that. I have a Fisher space pen that I keep in here and it's secured to the side. And then also I keep a toothbrush just because I have Invisalign now and uh, you have to brush your teeth sometimes when you're out if you're uh, eating and things like that. I will say really quick, this is a Radius like travel toothbrush. And these are kind of known this brand is because they have these giant heads on these toothbrushes. Now I, at home I have a fancy like Sonicare electronic toothbrush, but before that I always used the Radius toothbrushes, the normal ones. This is a little smaller, but the normal ones have huge heads on them. And I honestly feel like that worked better. Um, if my Sonicare ever gives out, I'm switching back to the full-size Radius toothbrushes. They're awesome, and I actually had less cavities and less dental issues when I was using uh, this brand over the fancy electronic toothbrushes. A little bit a tangent there, but I just really like those toothbrushes. I want to talk about that. Inside here, I have, um, oh man, how did I forget the name of this? A Benchmade Mini Bug Out in orange. This is on sale, I think, because it's not a popular color, but I like it. And it's nice and light. Uh, I have a Osborne that I keep in my work briefcase just because that one has, has like some sentimental value and I'm a little bit worried about losing it. So I don't carry it as much anymore. This one, however, is my primary carry one now. I also have a Leatherman Squirt P4. It's a really nice little multi-tool and I use this all the time. Uh, even to like fix little things in my truck and stuff like that. Uh, it has a little knife on it, tweezers, scissors. It's only like seven tools on here but it's pretty much everything you can ask for just when you're out and about and you're not actually doing like serious work with your hands. Over here I have a Thermapin. It's like a drop thermometer, I think mini drop, something like that. It's just an ambient air thermometer. And I like this just because sometimes I nerd out about weather and I like to know what the temperature is in any given place. So we were out in a tunnel last week 
And I was like really regretting not having this just because I was really curious like how like cold it was in the tunnel while we were walking through it. And I like having this for things like that. It's not, I don't know if there's any like really practical use. If you're camping, it's kind of useful to, to gauge your gear's effectiveness by knowing the outside temperature so you can plan better next time. Uh, but for like normal city stuff, it's not like super useful. It's just something I enjoy having. I won't show you my keys, but I will mention this little thing here. I've heard some people saying you shouldn't show your keys on videos or social media or things like that because people can copy them. I don't know if that's true, but I'm not gonna do it. So my keys aren't that interesting anyways. Anyways, I keep my AirTag on a mini carabiner. I really like these mini carabiners. I'll put a link to them as well. Um, and they're normally equipped to my keys just so I can find my keys. But if we're out, I walk, I take my dog over to like dog parks and some of the dog parks here are fairly large. Um, but what's nice is there's a ton of people in the park. So she's gotten away from me a couple of times. Um, never really lost but it has me a little bit paranoid that one day she could get lost. So when we're at the dog park, I unclip it for my keys. I have it on this carabiner so I can just clip it on her collar. There's tons of people with iPhones around, so you never really lose her in those, uh, those parks. So this is my dog slash key tracker or anything else. The carabiner really, if I need to attach it to anything temporarily, uh, it's there. So it's my general purpose tracker. On this side, I will pouch that I keep my glasses in, or sunglasses. I don't like using uh, like a hard case just because it takes up so much space. And I'm not really doing anything where it's like I'm worried about the glasses getting crushed. So these soft pouches are perfect and I also got that off Amazon. And here I have my AirPod Pros. Uh, they're just wrapped in like a Mario silicone case. Uh, field notes, same one I've been carrying in most of my bags. This transfers bags as I go along. And that's about all I have in this pocket. I can carry more. Sometimes I carry like a small water bottle or something on that side. And this main pocket, it's pretty empty right now. Uh, just because this is like my pocket I use for larger things, like maybe layers, a small sweater, small sweatshirt, puffer jacket, rain jacket possibly, uh, depending on the weather. So this is like my layers area, or I'll throw the camera in here. Uh, just any general purpose larger items I need to carry, that's what, what this pocket's generally used for. But right now I have some random things in here that I typically put in here, uh, but I don't carry them every single day. So I have a larger Leatherman in this pocket. This is like my, mostly my, I guess, what would this be? My hiking one, but sometimes if I know I'm going to be doing more strenuous things or I might need an actual more serious tool, I'll just throw this in there. This is a Leatherman rebar. I specifically picked this because it was like the, most fully featured one that didn't have like the all the extra pieces. A lot of the Leatherman tools when you get up higher in price have a ton of like detachable little screwdrivers and different things can get lost. And I knew I was gonna lose it for sure. So I just got the nicest, most fully featured one that didn't have anything separate. So it's all integrated, there's no extra little pieces. And this has worked out well so far. So Leatherman rebar, that's mostly just uh, a camping one, camping and hiking tool, but it does end up in here sometimes. Uh, I have a battery charger. I do need to replace this. I'm not gonna, I'll put a link to it if I can still find it. I don't really like this so much anymore. I bought it back in the day when Pokemon Go was a big deal. And it's a little bit outdated now and the battery doesn't hold a charge so well. So I do need to replace this. If anybody has any suggestions, I would appreciate that. I just need something small to quickly get my phone charged up if it dies, just so I can get a call out or something, get directions. I don't need to be charging my phone five or six times. I don't need a huge pack. Um, another problem with this one is I can't charge my Kindle with it. I know there's like a special feature all these packs need because Kindles uh, draw such a small amount of current that it won't actually like trigger this to start charging. So if anybody has a suggestion for a replacement that's not too big, packs nicely, uh, maybe has USB-C and can charge a Kindle, I would appreciate that. So let me know in the comments. Uh, like I mentioned, the Kindle, and I usually have this wrapped in a microfiber cloth. I always carry this even if I don't have the Kindle just because these come in uh, come in handy a lot. Say I'm out and I buy something fragile, I can quickly wrap it in here and throw it in my bag. Uh, if I need to clean up something, if I'm on my motorcycle, I can clean my face shield. Uh, I just always think you should carry some type of cloth. It's just a really handy thing to have. And that kind of covers the inside. And the little back pocket back here, 
I have my EpiPen. It's flat. I really like this kind of generic brand EpiPen just because they're flat and much easier to pack than the pen cylinder shaped ones that everybody knows. And then I have a little case for business cards. Uh, I also, I forgot my wallet, but my wallet is usually in here. It's uh, Trayvax. Uh, they don't make it anymore, but I've been using it like six years and it's been my favorite wallet I've owned my entire adult life. Uh, they have a very similar one now. I'll put a link to the kind of similar replacement that they have now. I can't directly recommend it, but I really enjoy my Trayvax wallet. So I'm sure they're still making good gear. They're made here in Washington. And I always like to support local businesses, but it honestly is a good wallet. I've owned so many wallets throughout my life and that's the only one I've kept for more than like a year or two. So that's kind of everything here for my, kind of every, why is Alexa talking? Anyways, this is pretty much my normal EDC uh, right now, this 2022 fall. And I might do some more videos. I have, like I mentioned, I have hiking specific EDCs. I have work specific ones. Uh, these are my bike, dog, and city ones. Uh, if you're interested in them, if you have any questions, if you want to see updated versions of my hiking and work ones, let me know. Uh, hope everybody's doing well, and I'll see you out there. I had to come back just to talk about this because I forgot these and I really don't want to forget it because these are my favorite gloves. I did a review video on them specifically a couple years ago now, but I've had these for, hmm, it's been a while, I would say three or four years. Uh, I use these primarily for bike riding. So I wear these in all weather, it'd be snow, raining, whatever. And these look still pretty new. They're Mechanics gloves. And when I say Mechanics, like Mechanics, the brand. They fit well. I have a ton of dexterity, so I can get in my pockets. Um, I get a little tiny dog treats with these. They work with my phone. I, I just can't believe the value you get with these gloves. And they're so comfortable. They're breathable. They work down to like, I don't know, like 30 degrees before uh, on a bike. You probably go lower if you're just walking or something. Uh, so they're a little bit more warm weather gloves. I use these all the way to like 60, 65 on my bike. And I just can't believe like what great of a value these are. Um, I think they're like 30 bucks when I bought them. I'll put a link to the exact model, but they work with everything. Like my phone, bicycling, I use them in the yard, dog walking around town, uh, whenever it's colder. Pretty much the entire winter, these are in my truck or they're in my bag. And I really didn't want to end this video without talking about these since they really are like a part of my true EDC. So that's that. Like I mentioned, hope you're doing well. I'll see you out there.